Dave Palumbo with another RX Muscle Rant. And today's topic is, does growth hormone make you tired? Does growth hormone lower blood sugar or raise blood sugar? These are very uh, two very important questions that I've been getting lately from a lot of uh, fans of the show, athletes that I work with. Uh, I, all my social media has just been popping up with these questions of, number one, does GH raise or lower blood sugar? We don't know. That. No one knows what, what, what the right answer is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys in a minute. Uh, number two, does GH make you sleepy? And, and if it does, why? Okay, so let's, let's tackle the blood sugar issue thing first. Um, I did a show on uh, insulin with uh, Colette Nelson uh, a couple months ago, and we talked about how GH, when you take it in large amounts for long periods of time, can make you what's called insulin resistant, meaning that you do not control blood sugar properly. Why is that? Well, because the, the insulin molecule and insulin in the body is designed at taking sugar in the blood and pushing it into the cells, feeding the cells, so to speak. The insulin feeds the muscle cells, it feeds the brain cells, and when those cells are all filled up, it fills up the fat cells, and, and so insulin can be a fat storage hormone, all right? Uh, when GH is around, and in very high amounts, which it's not supposed to be around in, bodybuilders do this obviously for, for, to try to grow better, burn fat. When they do this, it causes insulin not to be able to get to its receptor. And if insulin can't do its job, then blood sugar levels elevate in the, blood, in the bloodstream. And that's unhealthy for us. As we know, that can cause all kinds of different problems from kidney failure to blindness to um, uh, the destruction of the extremities because of the blood uh, vessels being congealed over with the uh, crystalline glucose. So we don't, want high we don't want high blood sugar. So, you know, Colette and I had spoken about how, you know, using uh, in these situations where diet doesn't correct it, using long-acting or basal insulins like Lantus to help lower the sugar and take the burden off the pancreas of producing so much insulin. All right, so everyone thinks after that, they watch that, that growth hormone raises blood sugar. But the truth of the matter is that in the short time, in the short period, when you take a shot of GH, immediately after doing that, okay, the GH circulates in the bloodstream, goes to the liver, the liver breaks it down and releases another hormone known as IGF-1. That stands for insulin-like growth factor 1. The reason why it is called insulin-like growth factor because it has the same effects as insulin in a sense. It doesn't store... Uh, glucose is fat, but it does lower blood sugar by driving nutrients, driving glucose into the muscle cells, brain cells, and liver cells, okay? When you remove glucose from the blood, what happens? You get low blood sugar. So initially, the acute phase of, in, of growth hormone injection, immediately after it, okay, within the next, in the first hour or two, is a blood sugar lowering effect, okay, from the IGF, not from the, from the growth hormone. The IGF release that's, that's initiated because the GH has been taken um, is what lowers blood sugar. So, does GH lower or raise blood sugar? Well, that's a, good, a great question again. Short term, it lowers blood sugar. Long term, if you use super high amounts, over four or five IUs a day, you could notice high blood sugars. If you are noticing high blood sugars, it means your pancreas is overwhelmed and being overworked, and it could lead to long-term damage of your pancreas. So the smartest thing to do would be to cut back your GH gross dosage or stop taking it for a week or so and see if that corrects the problem. If it does, then great. Uh, just start it up again. Just don't take as much. If it doesn't correct the problem and you're still running high blood sugars, you, you're going to have to think about taking a long-acting insulin to give your beta cells some rest so they can rejuvenate themselves. So GH can raise and it can lower blood sugar depending on you know, what situation you're in. So don't be confused by that. Second uh, question is, does GH make you tired? So a lot of people tell me, hey, I started taking GH a week ago and I, I'm tired all day long. Now, what would cause tiredness? You know, well, when you go and eat a crazy you know, huge meal... Okay, Sunday pasta dinner at Grandma Mary's house. Okay, about an hour after I finished that the dinner, I would always want to fall asleep, as would everyone. Would everyone be sleeping on the couch? Why is that? Well, because when you eat a lot of carbs and it raises, it causes insulin release. When the insulin lowers the blood sugar, sometimes it lowers it too much, and then you get tired. So usually after a big meal, you over secrete insulin, you get really tired. Well, GH once again, short term. Remember, what does it do? Lowers blood sugar. So a lot of people will take their GH shot, you know, eat with a meal, 
and then maybe an hour later, and then all of a sudden they start to get tired, and they don't understand why, and then they want to sleep, and especially guys that take it several times during the day. Every time they do that, an hour after they take it, they, they want to fall asleep. So GH will make you tired when it drops your blood sugar. Now, if you're in an off-season scenario where you're not dieting, just eat a little food and you'll feel better. Uh, if you're dieting and that's happening, then you know that, that, that might be a problem. Okay, so uh, I would suggest maybe limiting GH shots to one time per day while you're dieting. So the, because since you can't really combat this low uh, sugar effect that's going on, because you could be on a, you could be on a ketogenic diet and you still might get low blood sugar, although it might not affect you as much because the brain is not using glucose as a fuel source. So, uh, sleepiness from GH is caused, once again, by this IGF-1 release, the lowering of the blood sugar. But remember, GH can do both, lower and raise. It's the long-term chronic elevations of blood sugar that we need to be aware of and address and not allow to occur because that will lead to future health issues. We don't want that. Look. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little rant and enjoyed some of the information that I'm providing. And obviously, if you like the information that we give you here at rxmuscle.com, show us the love, subscribe, hit like below, and we're going to give you a lot more in the coming months. Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle rant.